speakers. Um, number one, when we do our march, all of our marshals have pink I need you to get up because it's do or die now. Do we want for generations and generations to look and say, how did they let this happen? Guess what? They were good people during the Holocaust to suffer. It was good people during the slavery in the Middle Passage to suffer. Do we want to be in the history books for our children, our children's children, and our neighbors and our communities? You say, oh, we went through that, but what did you do? For her, instead, I ask that you scream and cry and bang down the door of every capitalist piece of shit that makes our society so sick. We can Bowing at the arches of patriarchy. Yeah, right. I'll always be a bad bitch. And naked aggression are just glorified in this great nation of toxic and oh so, oh so fragile masculinity. first met you, I knew that you were special that night. Do up, up, up. You had a little something, you're pretty, I love your pussy. I'm upset! Does not mean yes! Little black dress does not mean yes! There is a dog. Probably gonna pet the dog at some point. So here we go, embarking on the, uh, the 2018 slut walk. Some standard no means no chance. Uh, patriarchy has been, uh, or patri our society has been very patriarchal and has always, uh, sh been dominated by men, mostly white men, and, uh, I'm not for maintaining the patriarchy, and I'm all for, uh, having a more diversified society where we could all get together. Do you think that the American patriarchy has maybe collapsed a little bit since people of color and more women have been seeking and holding positions in public office? Like, for example, the last presidential election, you know, we did have a woman running as a Democratic nominee, so perhaps that does show the progress? Uh, yeah, those baby steps, uh, definitely, but I feel like at the core, capitalism has been the system that has allowed uh, the power structures that allow for sexism, racism, transphobia, all these isms uh, to permeate in our society. As far as an economic system, what system do you think would be better for allowing a more diverse and inclusive like workforce? Um, one that, well, I, I'm considering myself more of like an anarcho-communist, okay. so an anarcho-communist state that Peter Kropotkin or Alexander Berkman writes about, okay. um, where the workers own the means of production and they uh, collectively decide what is produced and uh, they also decide um, stuff like uh, let me let me let me think a little bit um, do you think that under a situation where the, you know the means of production are uh, completely owned by the society that there might be variances in levels of individual production which could result in you know these hierarchies and different systems um, you know kind of I guess solidifying between the people um, in a society where there's, uh, I'm sorry, can you repeat that? Yeah, well, you know, there's this phenomenon called the Pareto distribution, which basically states that the square root of the number of people involved in any situation where there's individual levels of productivity will end up, you know, producing half of whatever is being produced. So if you have 100 employees, 10 of them are going to be hyper-efficient, probably produce half of what is being produced. And so, you know, we saw this in uh, the Soviet Union. It's what happened to the, uh, the kulaks that were in um, Ukraine, is because they were producing the majority, you know, they were the good farmers producing the majority of the crops, and then the Soviets confused that with them being greedy and then they killed them and then six million Ukrainians starved to death. Oh yeah, I'm not a Stalinist apologist or Lenin or apologist of any sort, but uh, I don't believe the USSR was more of a, social, of a socialist society at all because the, the workers never really owned the means of production. Absolutely. That was interesting because obviously you know, dominance hierarchies within humans and any species that actually have existed for millions of years. Those systems are intuitive in our biology that go far beyond where we branched off from these species in the evolutionary tract. Um, so creating a system where those are just absent is impossible and it has been tried before. Once we get to moving, it's not going to take long before they realize that we are the enemy. So, yeah, so I know that. Oh, your, your rice yeah. cake? Yeah, could you just run that by me again, the name? Yeah, okay. That's what I need to Hey, Kate Murphy still teaching there? Yeah, Miss yeah, Murphy. Yeah, yeah. I tell, didn't have tell her. her. Rob Fiddler says hi. Okay, okay. That's interesting. Uh, you know what we're doing? So, 
and they, they did ask us where we're from, what school we go to, and he actually tried to verify with us based off of, you know, there's this teacher that works there, and he threw a name at us to see if she was still there, and it was funny because we just, you know, we actually did go to that school, so. I was wondering if you'd mind telling us a little bit about the sign that you're holding today. I'm sorry. I don't know what <laughs> Feminism is the radical notion that women are people. I've seen that a lot on bumper stickers and t-shirts. I was wondering if you could explain it better to us. Uh, I'm sorry. Thanks anyways. Do you have anything you'd like to say? Your t-shirt's definitely making a statement. I do like your sign. It looks like you put a lot of work into it. Thank you. Um, I don't know what I wanted to say. So, I mean, you're obviously here at the slut walk. Do you believe that, like, you know, slut is an empowering term that, like, women should be um, associating with themselves? Absolutely. And why is that? Well... <laughs> I don't know. I'm really bad at this. You just No, that's fine. She's really good at this. Excuse me? Would you like to talk to us today about what you're out here protesting for? Um, well, uh, I can talk a little about my sign if you want. Yeah, imagine if men were as disgusted with rape as they are with periods. Yes. Um, most, some men, oh, quite a few men, more than I'd like to think, are disgusted with a natural human bodily function. That's true. Bodily function. But they'll rape a girl. Do you think that, I mean, are you being hyperbolic or do you truly believe that, you know, men are more disgusted with, you know, the sight of, you know, vaginal blood than actually, like, raping a woman? Well, it's more just a punchline, but also there are just a lot of people I know, the type of men that rape people are the same type of men that are disgusted by things like this. Do you think that we as a society kind of promote and, like, normalize men like that? Yeah, a lot of, in, like, media today, in television shows and just representation that men see, like boys see when they grow up, they think it's normal to push for a yes when a woman says no and just... Actually, I couldn't agree with you more. I think that the biggest mistake um, that modern feminism has made, in my opinion, is, in, is instead of holding men to the same standard of, you know, you shouldn't, you know, be sexually promiscuous and just see that, you know, women are a form of social capital. Instead of doing that, I think that third wave feminism has, in a way, said that, you know, women should just be able to do it too, and now we're just all out here just behaving in that manner. Well, I think a woman has a right to be empowered in her own sexuality, and men do too, but just in the ways that it's shown up a lot of the way Woo! in the ways that it's shown up a lot of the way it's like sexual empowerment over women mm -hmm. instead of just for themselves because we do live in a society where you have these older caucasian white males it's the white men they're the white man with his privilege i guess my question then would be because you know i think 93 percent of women in the united states agree that men and women should be treated the same but less than one in five would you know self-identify as a feminist so why do you think that is that women for some reason have this perception of feminist movements as you know they're not really about women's equality. Oh. Do not touch. You got an hour. Do, <laughs> Do you have an hour? I would need a good 45 minute answer for that. And I got to an answer this call. Thank you so much. When I did ask the final question of, you know, if 93% of women agree that, you know, men and women are equal, I don't know where that 7% comes from. But anyway, if it's just 93, perhaps there's a margin of error. But then less than one in five are actually self identifying as a feminist. Why is there that discrepancy? And then the conversation ended. Okay, we're going to see if we can talk to these people. I actually almost, I was instinctively about to say, excuse me, sir. It was, that was almost bad. All right, we're going to see if we can pet the dog. If I don't pet the dog, I'm going to be a little bummed. Yeah. Can I pet him? Of course. Is it a she? It's a he. Hi, dog. Would you mind telling us a little bit why you're out here today? About what? Would you mind telling us why you're out here protesting today? Uh, against sexual assault and consent. What does your sign say? I couldn't really see it. It says, just because I'm drunk doesn't mean I want your junk. That's a really good point because one thing that I have a huge issue with is it seems like, you know, different like fraternity parties and stuff are almost engineered with the sole purpose of bringing women there and get them intoxicated just so all the fraternity brothers can then take advantage of them. Yeah, I, I agree. So do you think that, because I know that sororities and fraternities, they're all like in cahoots with each other. Do you think that there's a certain risk management responsibility that women have knowing that, you know, they could avoid those situations? No, no. Okay. Oh, my name is John Doyle. Nice to meet you. Uh, I'm with an ind I'm just with an independent media outlet. Um, well, I'm with Refuse Fascism, which is an organization, national organization, that was founded on an emergency basis after the Trump Pence election, and it is a movement of diverse perspectives who agree that 
Um, Trump and Pence represent a danger to humanity and that they're fascists. In what way are they fascists, like from a policy perspective? From a policy perspective, in what way are they not fascists? Well, I think when you look at who Canada is, it's pretty clear. When I think of fascism, I would think of, you know, more state control over the economy and over the press and stuff like that. And, you know, with Trump deregulating the economy, that doesn't really strike me as fascism. It's not just the regulation over the economy, but I think you do see the regulation of the press. When you have a president calling the media, mainstream media, fake news, and making things up, and actually having, doing fake videos where he punches out CNN people, I think that's pretty intimidating. Oh my God, what's going to happen? And I think that, yes, this is a fascist regime, and Refuse Fascism believes that it will only be a movement of tens and thousands of people in nonviolent protest in the streets that will make it possible to re remove this regime, that it's operating outside of the normal channels of politics, and that the normal voting by itself, and the emphasis is by itself, is not going to get rid of this regime. I agree that it's definitely not the typical presidency to measure. One thing is I noticed that in the pamphlet that you gave us, you were conflating, you know, different fascist regimes like uh, under Mussolini and under Hitler with what's happening now, and this might just be the tip of the iceberg. And I'm wondering because, you know, when Hitler took power in 1933 and Mussolini, people that tried to protest against them were, you know, put in prison and, you know, they were jailed. All opposition was essentially purged. And we don't really see that in America. Well, we are seeing it more and more where people are facing heavy charges for protesting. Burning cars and smashed windows. A small group of protesters dressed in black, their faces covered, armed with hammers and bricks. Do you think that Trump would ever propose something like an enabling act that would allow him to seize full control? And do you think that his supporters would actually be in support of that? I think, yeah, he would. I think it's very, it's highly probable that under the right circumstances, he would propose a law like that. And yes, it's definite that his supporters would be behind it. Do you think that to compare the Trump presidency to something, or even the early stages of it to something like, you know, what happened under Adolf Hitler, doesn't necessarily, uh, you know, emphasize the degree to which it's similar, but it kind of just plays down the severe effects that actually happened under the Holocaust? No, because I think it's, it is the early days. I think he's moving faster than Hitler ever did. And I don't think it is to minimize. I think to deny that is to minimize what's happening here. There's calling immigrants animals, rapists. Well, that, that wasn't the immigrants. That was MS-13 and then the illegal aliens that are coming in. And they are rapists. That's just a fact. Well, first of all, he, he, he talks about immigrants that way. And then he says MS-13. We talk immigrants or illegal immigrants? Illegal in act of desperation. So, look, I gotta go. Okay. okay? Thank you for speaking with us. Sure. Um, the thing, thing, it's, um, you know, th those things don't exist in a vacuum. Uh, you can't have open borders and then also a welfare state. I know that a majority of illegal aliens that do come into this country then get on government subsidy programs, food stamps, entitlements, different things like that. So the best way that you could bankrupt the country is actually by completely opening your borders and then also continuing to give out those entitlements. So those things, um, they cannot, you know, they don't exist in a vacuum.